So how should you feel when your enemy falls? When someone that has wronged you, when things don't, um, when things go bad for them, how should you feel? I know a lot of times in this life when someone wrongs someone in some type of way, for example, they murder a loved one, and then that murderer, he either get killed or he get locked up. And I know a lot of people, they find joy in that. I'm glad. I'm glad they got his butt. Yeah, I'm glad they did that. I'm glad he did. I'm glad he got life. I'm glad he got the death penalty. But is that how believers should be? Is that how uh, those who follow Jesus Christ should be? Let me ask you this. Did Jesus ever display that type of behavior when they killed him? Now, let's go to the scriptures because I love to give you scripture. Let's look at a little story here in 2 Samuel. For anybody who may know, you have the um, Saul. Back in the Old Testament days, he pursued David, all right? Out of jealousy of David. He pursued David, wanted to kill him. Now, I want to show you what happened when Saul died. Now, let's see how David responded, even though he knew Saul wanted to kill him dead. Let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 1. Let's start at verse 1. It says, Now we came to pass... After the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag. Now understand that David, he had to um, he had to flee from Saul, so he was fleeing to other places so that he could stay safe from Saul. So now David is in Ziklag. Okay. It came even to pass on the third day that behold a man out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. Obeisance. And that word means he bowed low to him. He bowed to him. And David said unto him, from which coming thou? Like, where are you coming from? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto them, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered that the people, um, and he answered that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. Now, David knew that Jonathan was following, I mean, that um, Saul was pursuing him. Now, this man that came out of the camp of Israel, he tells, um, he tells David that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. And David said unto the young man that told him, how knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan, his son, be dead? And the young man that told him said, as I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and the horse and horsemen followed hard after him. See, this is when Saul was in battle, and Saul decided to kill himself he, by leaning upon his own spear. It says in verse 7, And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me, and I answered, Here I am. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So Saul wanted this man to help him kill himself. So I stood upon him. So now listen. So the man, he say, I stood upon him and slew him because 
I was sure that he would not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them hither unto my Lord. Now look how David responded to that. Knowing Saul is dead. Saul one of them dead. But look how David responded. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them. He tore them. And likewise, all the men that were with him, they tore their clothes after hearing this. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel because they were fallen by the sword. So David didn't get happy that Saul was dead and, and Saul wanted David dead. Saul wanted to kill him was pursuing him, making him flee from him. But when Saul was killed, when Saul died, David didn't rejoice, but he mourned. He mourned for him. He tore his clothes. He wept. He cried. And he fasted. He went without food until evening time. All right? That's how he responded. Now, let's look at um, an example. What? Well, let's look at Proverbs twenty-four real quick. Let's go to Proverbs chapter twenty-four. I want to show you what, how you, the, what the scriptures tell us to do. All right, and what not to do. Proverbs chapter twenty-four, verses uh, fifteen. No, verses seventeen. The scripture says, "Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth." And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbled. Let me say that again. Rejoice not when thine enemy fall. And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbled. See, that's how God teaches you to be. Don't be glad and don't rejoice. Don't throw a party when your enemy fall. Don't be so excited when your enemy stumble. That's not what he teaches us to be. But Jesus, but the Bible teaches us to be the opposite of that because you know the bible tells us to um when your enemy is hungry feed him when he thirsty give him something to drink that's what you do when your enemy falls when your enemy is in need now let me show you an example in the book of psalms how not to be look at um what david said in the book of psalm chapter 35 verse 15 he says but in mine adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects, and the abjects is the attackers, gathered themselves together against me. And I knew it not, and they did tear me and cease not. See, notice how David says that his adversary, his adversity, they rejoiced. Okay, when David was down. You know, so that's how you don't want to do that. That's not how you're supposed to be. But let me show you how you're supposed to be. Let's look at Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 23. And then I'm going to show you an example of Stephen. All right. So Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 23. This is what he did on the cross. Verse 33 and 34. Scripture says, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, talking about Jesus, and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So when Jesus was on the cross being crucified, Jesus didn't, he didn't wish that harm would come upon them. He didn't pray to God that evil would come their way. But yet he what he did was he said, Father, forgive them. See, God, see, Jesus asked God to forgive them, even though they was doing him wrong. He yet asked the Father to forgive them. Now let's look at Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 7. Now, let me show you what happened with Stephen when he was being stoned. Acts chapter 7. Let's look at, um, when you look at verse 51, 
Now look how Stephen is talking to the people. He says, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Which of the prophets have have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain and they have slain them which show which showed before of the coming of the just one. Of whom ye have now and you of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. So he letting them know that, hey, your fathers back in the old days, in the Old Testament days, they persecuted the prophets. OK, they persecuted them. They slew them. They slain them. They killed them. OK, and all they were doing was just prophesying of the just one, Jesus Christ, to come. So now he is giving, giving them the truth, but see, they don't like it. So he calling them, hey, betrayers and murderers. So now notice 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. See, he pricked some in them. He pricked that heart in them and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. See, he see now God put his spirit on him. He full of the Holy Ghost now. And so he looked steadfastly straight into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now look at what God showed him while he was about to be crucified, while he was about to be stoned, rather. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. See, they didn't like what they was hearing from him. He just let them know that, hey, the prophet was prophesying of the just one. Well, they were prophesying of Jesus, and they, they, um, they persecuted them. So now he letting them know, hey, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And look what they did. Stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now, look at what Saul, look at what Stephen did. After he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, after he was being stoned, and he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So even while being wronged, while being stoned, Stephen, out of, out of his heart, out of the love in his heart for him, he, he, he knelt down on his knees and he cried with a loud voice to God. He says, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. See, he knew they was doing him wrong because all he did was told them the truth. But yet they, wanted, they didn't like what he was saying. So they stopped their ears. They rushed him, cast him out of the city, and then stoned him. And after being wrong like that, after having his life cut short, he prayed for him. He prayed that God would forgive him. And so that's what we must do. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't rejoice when your enemy is troubled. But what you do is you pray for them. If they need you for something, if they need help, give them what they need. The Bible says you reap burning coals on their head. But you're doing it out of just love and obedience to God. He say, don't rejoice, don't rejoice. Why? Because, Lord, you said don't rejoice. Why? Because I'm supposed to love my neighbor. I'm supposed to love those that persecute me. I'm supposed to pray for them, as the scriptures say. So I hope that you can understand and you could take this into your life. Don't rejoice when those who done you wrong get what's coming to them. Don't rejoice when, um, when the things that he have reaped or he have sown, he start to reap it. Don't rejoice because he is reaping what he sown. All right? Pray for him. Don't rejoice. All right? 
So I hope you learned some in this video now. See, I like to talk about things and, and some of these things people probably don't know or need to hear it. So I hope that you learned some from this lesson. I will say be blessed. Believe in Jesus, the Son of God. If you don't believe in him, believe that he died and rose again. And if you on my video for the first time, you never accepted Jesus as your Savior. I'm telling you now, you need to believe. Believe in Jesus that he died and rose again and God set him at his right hand in heavenly places. All right? And let's all, let's repent of these sins we in. Let's repent. Let's turn away. Get baptized in Jesus' name. And let's, um, let's live our life for Christ so that we could get that crown when he come back. All right? Until next video, see you later.